Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for bringing us here once again. And I pray that the Lord who has brought us will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. We have sung, rescued the perishing. The Lord is looking unto us to rescue the perishing. And as we have made up our mind to rescue the perishing, to care for the dying, knowing fully well that Jesus we care and Jesus we save. The Lord will help us to be doer of his word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We worship you for your faithfulness. We thank you for how you have brought us here once again. Despite the weather condition, you have brought us to bless us. Father, may your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray everything we're going to do today, let it be to your glory. And you will take charge, you take control, preeminent control in Jesus' name. Amen. As we have sung, O Lord, to rescue the perishing, Father, you will help us. That nothing will hinder us from rescuing the perishing, knowing fully well that our reward will be waiting for us in heaven. Father, help us, O Lord, to be the doer of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because you have answered. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This morning, we are considering an important topic. And it says, the lost sheep. The lost sheep. As we go through the scripture, we see that even our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, talked about the lost sheep. Someone that has a hundred sheep and one is missing. And this person have to leave one, I mean leave the 99, and run after just one, so that the one that was lost can be recovered. Jesus Christ gave the parable. Today, this morning, we are going to appropriate this. How is it, how can we use this topic relates to our contemporary life? Of course, we cannot be looking for sheep that is lost, but what does this sheep represent? As we listen attentively to this uh, message this morning, I pray that the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are going to open our Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 18. Matthew, chapter 18. And we're going to read verses 12 to 14. Matthew 18, 12 to 14. For this, how think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seek that which was gone astray? And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiced more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Verse 14. Even so, it is not the will of, of your father which is in heaven that one of this little one shall perish. Of course, you know, like a shepherd, you have 99, 99, uh, 100 sheep. And one is missing, you'll be like, okay, I still have a hundred and, I mean, ninety-nine, so that's not a big deal. But Jesus Christ is giving all this parable, saying that even though it's just one, the person left the ninety-nine that are safe and secure, and went ahead and looked for one. Mm -hmm. So as we use it this, this day, as we relate it to our contemporary time, I pray the Lord will help us to be the doer of the word in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. We're going to read one more our text. We're going to open our Bible to the book of Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19 and we're going to read from verses 1 to 10. Luke chapter 19. And this is the story of Zacchaeus. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus which was the chief among the publicans, 
and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the price be, and could not for the price because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood, and Zacchaeus stood, and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I gave to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Look at the life of, here we always teach that Jesus Christ is our perfect example. And that is why we always encourage us to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. This is the example of Jesus Christ here. They know Zacchaeus as a publican, tax collector, you know, he usually do something, gets money, things from people, false accusation and all that. But when he determined to follow the Lord, he has to let go of all those things. And that is why we also talk about restitution here. He said, half of his good he gives to the poor. And if he has received anything from anybody wrongfully, maybe you steal something, you, you do this, he said he will return. That is when we talk about restitution. That's for another day. But this is somebody that is a sinner, and a lot of people, the scribes and Pharisees, they were talking about Jesus, telling Jesus that he's going to be, be, be a guest to a sinner. Jesus Christ did not come to this world because of the sin. Jesus Christ came to this world because of the sinners. And that is why, if you are giving your life to Christ, Jesus Christ expects us to also go out and seek those who want to rescue the perishing. Tell them about Christ. Invite them to the church. Preach to them. Tell them about the salvation of the Lord. Tell them about the love of Christ. And that is what the Lord Jesus Christ expects from all believers. This is saying, we are saved to serve. And as we do this, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the greatest act desire of our God. And indeed, the purpose of Christ's mission into this world is to seek the lost. People are dying every day. People are trooping to hell. But we are here folding our hands. We are singing amazing grace to heaven, and we did not talk to other people about the love of Christ. As we read on, we will see that there is a portion in the Bible that says, as you are a Christian, you are a watchman, and you have to go and warn the people. If you don't warn them, their blood will be required from our hands. And I pray that none of nobody's blood will be required from our hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sinners and backsliders. <clears throat> Do we know the meaning of backsliders? Okay. Backsliders are people that they know the Lord before and they already, you know, going out preaching. You they already give they gave their life to Christ before. Now they backslide. That is, they left their false feet and they went back to sin. Backsliders. 
Jesus Christ expects us, if you know anybody that this person who oh, is firing for the Lord, is preaching to the Lord, or oh, is committed before, but the person is withdrawing, the Lord wants us to encourage the people to come back to the Lord, to continue to serve the Lord faithfully. And the Lord will bless us as we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. God called um, evangelist a wise man or a wise woman. If you win so for the Lord, you are wise. No wonder there is always joy in heaven over one sinner that repented or the backsliders that come back to the Lord. Our God is good all the time. So, the good thing, if somebody has gone astray, the Lord is willing to receive you back. Maybe you look at yourself, oh, I used to do this for the Lord, I used to do this and that. But you let that false faith. The moment you realize and you want to come back to the Lord, good day, the Lord is willing to receive you. Because the either that will come unto him, he will not why cast them away. So you are willing, you are desiring now that I am back and I want to be back fully with the Lord. The Lord will give you the grace to continue with the Lord in Jesus' name. The lost sheep is the person who at once accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior, but later turned away his heart from him in his backsliding position. He might still be coming regularly to church, but have gone or they have gone totally astray, left the church. Sometimes some people, uh, they are already bustling in their heart. It's not until when somebody, you know, stop coming to church that, you know, that person has bustled. Some people, they are still coming to church. They are still doing what they used to do, but in their heart, they already bustled. So God don't want us to do that. If you are bastarded in the church, and sometimes some people they will remain in the church, but they are doing what they are not supposed to be doing. So some they will leave the church because they don't want to continue to hear the word. Because as soon as long as they continue to hear the word, you know, the word will be hammering their heart and they don't want to hear it, so they leave. But either way, whether you are still in the church but you are bastarded in your heart or the person left the church, the Lord still expects us to seek them. If you notice it, if the Lord speak to your heart, that, that sister, go and speak to her. That brother, go and speak to her. And you know the Spirit of the Lord is talking to you. You go and talk to the person. This is the warning. If you want the person, um, the Lord will bless you. For that in Jesus' name. But if you refuse to warn, especially when the Lord gives you the express uh, injunction to go out and reach out to somebody and you refuse to do it, you have a query to answer with the Lord. I pray that none of us who will go and obey the Lord fully in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. especially when the Lord speaks to us. So that is why we are saying this morning we need to go out and reach out. All the sinners out there, they are wallowing in sin. They don't know the way of Calvary. They don't know the way of the Lord. But you have known the way of the Lord. You have tasted the Lord. We need to tell other people about this law. And you should allow others to also see Jesus in us. The state of the backslider is manifested in his turning away from righteousness into sin, be it a pastor, be it a geo, whatever it is called, GS whatsoever, the moment the person turns away from righteousness to sin, the person is a backslider. You have to pray and come back to the Lord. Pray for God to wash you and cleanse you with this blood that is shared on the cross of Calvary. Okay. Forsaking his covenant with God when we give our life to Christ. I remember we cry unto the Lord, Lord, 
give me grace to follow you. We pray unto the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me, cleanse me, I forsake all my sinful ways. A songwriter say, uh, there's a great change since I born again. The things I used to do, I do them no more. Is that our case this morning? The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lukewarmness in Christian faith. Murmuring against God. God, why this? Why that? Why have you forsaken me? This and that. All kind of stuff. Some people even went into idolatry. Do you know another way of idolatry can even be in the church? Like idol worshiper, right? Do you know that it can be in the church? Some people, their pastor is their idol. If their pastor says something, and that thing is not in the Bible, they will obey what the pastor says, mm -hmm. as long as it's the pastor that says it. Those people that they are obeying what the pastor or the Jew says, and it's not according to the Bible, but because of the respect they have for, the, for their pastor or their Jew whatsoever, they obey. Those people, they are already idol worshippers. Because they are, it's like they obey their pastor more than God. So you don't want to find yourself in that victim. And we always say, pastor say something, check it. Make sure it's there. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You see that God has no delight in the backslider remaining in their backsliding state. God wants us to want them to come back to Him. Therefore, He brings corrective judgment upon Him in order to make Him repent. Sometimes some people, when they leave the Lord, like that things start happening to them. Oh, this, that, that, they will not, oh, they remember, just like the prodigal son that left everything. He went to the strange country. He lavished everything. Now, when he's in poverty, he remember, oh, I need to go back home. But the good thing is, if you come back home, the Lord is willing to receive you. And I pray that if anybody that has gone astray, they will come back home and the Lord will receive them all in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you are an instrument that God used to bring them back home, you have a reward too in heaven. And we will not lose our reward in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Amen. All who are standing in the faith by the grace of God have a responsibility to endeavor to bring back those guilty and of basilidae. Let's open our Bible to the book of Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 1. <coughs> chapter 6 verse 1. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. Brethren, a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Some people today, they are fighting for position. Oh, the sister in the choir, oh, she sings so much. She is the only one that normally do the solo, da da da. And maybe later on, maybe the sister now, Basli, God forbid. And then somebody is there happy, good. Yes, she, she do as if all those things is not supposed to be seen in the Christian door. If somebody was like, it's supposed to ache your heart. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be rejoicing, good for her. She always do too spiritual anyway. No, your own responsibility is to pray for the person. Visit the person if possible. Do whatever you can do to bring that person back to the Lord. And I pray that the Lord 
will use us mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. To disobey this instruction of the Lord is a mark that we have no love or compassion of Christ in our heart. And that is why sometimes when somebody is talking about somebody that has lead and they are laughing about it, that normally breaks my heart. That somebody left the Lord and somebody is talking about it and laughing, it's always break my heart. And God don't expect us to be, you know, talking about somebody that has lied and we are not doing anything to you. We are not praying about it, praying for the person to, for the restoration. But we are laughing about it. That is no. That means that shows that we don't have the love of Christ. Because if we have the kind of love of Christ that says, "I must do the work of Him that sent me," while it is day, the night comes when no man can walk. We will not have time to be laughing about somebody, but slide, or somebody that was supposed to be going out together, and is withdrawing back. Well, in Jesus' name, mm. we see that we are. Let's see. Let's let's open our Bible to the book of um, Ezekiel, chapter three. I'm going to read verse twenty and twenty-one. Ezekiel. Ezekiel, Daniel, Old Testament. <sighs> We're going to read verse 20 and 21. I just want us to make sure we follow him. He said again, When a righteous man does turn from his righteousness, and commit iniquity. Iniquity there is sin. And I lay a stumbling blocks before him. He shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness which he had done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at the hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteousness that the righteousness sin not, the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. That is why we cannot base on uh, beginning righteousness, God, present, present, what are you doing? Oh, some people, oh, ah, I used to do this, I used to do that, but you're not doing it no more, you have to go back to it. I used to do this for the Lord, I used to, I used to, no, 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 go back to it. The Lord wants us to go back to it. And we deliver ourselves, when we want people, we want them, and we too, we live right, the Lord there's a reward for us in heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 15. Let's see the states, the spiritual states of the lost sheep. <coughs> First Timothy chapter five. Let's see what is their spiritual state. Those one that are lost sheep, the sinners, the backsliders, they are the one that are considered lost sheep. Verse fifteen. For some are already turned aside. After Satan. That is the spirit, that's their spiritual state. They have turned from the Lord to Satan. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. 
1 Corinthians 10, 10. Chapter 10. Yes, 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmur, and were destroyed of the destroyer. God don't expect us to be murmuring. Look at what she's doing. Look at that. Look at what they are doing. You know, if you have any concern, address the appropriate person instead of us grumbling and murmuring about it. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Verse 10. And 11. Verse 10 and 11. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law. And forgot his work and his wonders that he had shielded them. Are you there today? You are not walking according to the precepts of the Lord. The Lord is calling you back. The Lord wants you to come back. And as you return, the Lord will receive you in Jesus' name. Even if you have not really given your life to Christ at all, this is another opportunity. You don't want to be lost forever in eternity. And that is why you really need to come to the Lord. And as you do so, the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Let's see the attitude to the Lordship in this passage. What should be our attitude as believers? Jeremiah. Chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. What should be our attitude as a believer? Chapter 3, Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplication of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their ways, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. What is God's attitude towards the lost sheep? Look at the Lord here speaking. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplicating of the children. You know? And the Lord is saying, Return, ye backsliding, and I will heal your backsliding. So that's a good news for backsliders. When you come back to the Lord, the Lord will receive you in Jesus' name. Okay, let's quickly look at um, believers' responsibility. Believers' responsibility towards the lost sheep. Let's open our Bible to the book of James, chapter 5. James, chapter 5. James chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 20. Let him know that he which converted the, which converted, converted the sinner from the error of his way 
shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. Go out there, the multitude of sin the person has committed will be forgiven when we go out there to reach out to the sinners. I pray that the Lord will help us, that we will obey the Lord and we see it is imperative for us to begin today to earnestly plead and pray for backsliders to return to God. We can start in our closet. Start praying for the lost sheep. Start praying for the sinners. And I pray that as we do this, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Let us close our eyes as we pray unto the Lord. Let us commit ourselves unto God's end. Ask yourself, have you given your life to the Lord? If not, you can do so at this time. But another thing is, have you given your life to Christ before or you have gone back? You have withdrawn in your commitment with the Lord, your heart with the Lord. If so, repent today because the Lord is willing to receive you. And as you do that, the Lord will receive you and the Lord will give you His grace to continue in, in Him in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you, we worship you for this morning. We give glory to your holy name, the lost sheep. The grace, O oh God, as believers to go out there and recover the lost sheep. Father, you will give unto us in Jesus' name. And we pray that in the process of recovering the lost sheep, Father, we pray that we will not be lost in Jesus' name. We pray you give us your grace, your enablement to obey this injunction to go out and do your mission, to go out and fulfill your desire. Father, give unto us in Jesus' name. As we continue, Father, continue with us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, because of answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.